Let's now have a look how we would go about building a web page that's going to have copper mine photo gallery. So in this video tutorial we'll have a look at some of the more important basic things and we're going to be checking out the config menu right here. So basically I've logged in as the admin and this is what I'm presented with. And just to compare actually when you log in as a guest or when you actually just visit a page and you're a guest, this is what you will be presented with. So there's going to be a home button, login, album list and the search. And from this page you can actually go into login and then log in as the admin if you're the admin or you can have your members log in through this page okay so this is just to compare what the difference are between the guest version of the copper mine photo gallery of your page and of course the admin side as well okay so the admin has some more information here and the random files and the last editions are there as well as in the guest all right so there's the random files and the last editions but also the admin of course has more options there's the my gallery option upload files log out list albums search files information config and users it's always very useful to go through the information section to go through the php info and there's some documentation there as well you can check the versions of the softwares that you're running as well okay so like i said in this video tutorial we'll have a look at the config option here and i just clicked on the config and this is the page that's actually opened up i'll find some information here first of all there is some sort of an error here that's saying that the value set for the game uh, for the gallery name is invalid and for the gallery description is invalid. Now this is because I have not created any galleries and thus I do not have any names for the galleries or the actual description. Down below we'll find a list of all the different options or the configuration if you would like. And here you can see that this is done in a way that you can actually expand each of these different settings and configurations by just clicking on this icon right next to it okay so if i click on general settings i'll be presented with the general settings of the configuration of my gallery first of all there is the gallery name and that's actually referring to this gallery name value here so for example i can set up any name here and have this as maybe my gallery in the description in the next field i'll put gallery containing my photos okay also take a note that in most of the cases almost all of the cases when you have some sort of a setting to set up so some sort of config configuration all the way to the right you'll find an icon that's like a question mark this is actually help link so if you click on this you'll be presented with some help and here for the gallery name you'll find some information about this particular field so if you're unsure about anything you can actually click on these little icons and they will actually give you the information about that particular setting and it's quite useful and if you run into some problems you can actually go here and it's very descriptive in a way that it gives a lot of information about what is expected to be entered there okay then the next section there we have the administrator email then we have the actual url and we have the url of the home page and basically this is if you have a different software for example wordpress and you would like to have your gallery on your web page so you use wordpress to create your page your web page and you also would like to have a gallery which you're going to be using uh, for which you're going to be using the copper mine gallery you would actually go here and change that okay you would put your url of your page there and then you would put the url of the copper mine gallery okay moving on to the next option which is allow zip download of favorites yes or no and actually in the yes section you have yes just the favorites or yes favorites and readme files all right then we have the time zone difference we have the help icons whether or not to be enabled and this is also uh, you know to give this help icons either to everyone or to the admin only so whoever logs in is a member of your site will actually have those little icons if you select yes everyone however if you just go yes admin only this will only be available sorry this will only be available to you as the admin enable clickable keywords in search yes or no 
and you can actually manage those keywords by clicking on this link here keyword separator you can use a semicolon or you can use space or a comma now it's always good to leave it as the semicolon because semicolon is not used as much as the other two options so the space and the comma and basically you are given here some sort of information do not change this unless you really know what you're doing and then you have the link here to convert keyword keyword separator all right then we move to enable plugins basically yes or no and you can hit on manage plugin link here to manage the plugins browsable patch add interference enable or disable process concurrency for batch add interference you can set this to any number you would like display display preview thumbnails on batch add interference you can disable it or enable it and the last option there is form token li lifetime okay so that's pretty much all in the general settings then we'll move to the second option there which is the language and charge settings basically you can set up your default language and you have the drop down menu here where you have a couple of different languages and you have the options to manage languages there as well auto detect language so what does this mean actually if um for example let's see if someone from france was visiting my site so basically instead of displaying everything in english automatically it will disp be displayed in french if the auto detect language has been enabled and this is only to do with the languages which are available here so basically there is i think about 20 of them so for example if you have some language which is not available here and the person from that country visits your your site they'll be shown in english so this, your site will be shown in english so if you enable the auto detect language by clicking this little checkbox here it will actually detect the um the origin from where the this particular viewer is actually visiting your site and it will actually auto detect the language and actually have everything in that language so basically what i like to do even though this is a very good and very useful little settings i actually like to have this disabled meaning that a lot of times when the translation is done it's not done correctly and if you are going to use some multi languages if you're going to run your site on many different languages i would strongly suggest that you actually do the translation manually so you would have a site in english and then you have the site for example in spanish or french so by doing this you make sure that everything is displayed the way it should be and that the tr translation has been displayed the way it should be now because this is a photo gallery web page there shouldn't be a lot of pages there should be a lot of images and thus there is not a lot of translating to be done and i think it's very very easy to actually do that rather than actually um, you know auto detecting the language then we have the last option there which is the character encoding and there's a couple of those which you can use just for the normal English you would use the Unicode and then if you for example are using Chinese uh, sorry if you're using Russian you will go into Cyrillic and if you're using Japanese you will go into Japanese as well okay so basically that's all that's available under the language settings